What's up you guys, Eric here with driverlineup.com. <clears throat> I am the world's okay steering wheel holder. And I would certainly invite you to subscribe to my channel because it's pretty okay. It's a pretty okay channel guys, I promise. Uh, man, I am well rested. I've had like a two day, 48 hour social media sabbatical, which has been amazing. I've gotten lots of rest played some video games, just had some really good quality downtime and I did not get on social media for two freaking days. It was amazing. But <clears throat> my YouTube channel has been some, sort of lacking. So I um, uh, just got my truck back to the house and figured I'd give you guys an update. Sorry, I'm trying to read messages that are coming across my phone. Um, <clears throat> I just came back from Prime. I had some amazing time with a new prime recruit, John Barry. Um, just such a cool meeting with him. Uh, he's at campus going through uh, orientation, just getting started with prime. He actually, <clears throat> he's a subscriber, he's been watching my channel and that's how we connected. He bought me this badass lined uh, prime hoodie freaking badass he actually he snuck it to me we were in the prime store and he's like hey man you want this hoodie you know, I'll buy you this hoodie you've been really helpful and I was like no no dude don't do that for me it's not why I do this I do this just because it's cool to connect with other drivers and try to help where we can and we got out into the hallway and we left the store I thought he'd bought himself a hoodie and he'd actually snuck one for me as well so <clears throat> right on John man that was really cool of you to do that I really appreciate it uh, and it was great spending some time with you man it was really kind of I haven't been back to campus in uh, gosh last time I was there was when Jenna was going through training I think so it would have been about a year ago uh, <clears throat> so it's been a long time since I've been to campus so it was just really cool to kind of get his whole perspective on it because I so remember when I was there. Now he's he's driven a truck before, just not for Prime. So um, he's not completely new to it, but new to Prime and new to OTR. Um, so it was just kind of, it was just really cool going back there and kind of having that nostalgic moment, you know what I mean? Of uh, being there at campus and seeing <clears throat> a lot of people walking around like deer in the headlights, you know getting ready to go through a new career and a major shift in their lives uh, to go into driving for Prime. So just a really neat experience. But seriously, John, it was really cool hanging out with you. I should have turned my phone on and said hello to you or turned my camera on and said hello to you while I was there. I was just so caught up in <clears throat> trying to, you were very hungry for information. So I was just so caught up in trying to keep the, keep the info flowing. But anyway, it was really cool to get out of the house and kind of hang out with uh, with someone else coming into Prime. So very much appreciate the time and and uh, appreciate you just hanging out with me for a little bit. It was really cool. So I do have the truck back at the house today. Guys, so many of you commented on this headlight issue. And I hope that this is the last time that it has to be brought up. Because what so many of you commented and said that it was likely the case is what the case was. And if there's ever anyone who watches this or any of my other videos from any of the dealerships or from Road Assist or any, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a suggestion here. And I know it's easier said than done because you deal with so many drivers day in and day out. But this one would have saved you, Peterbilt, thousands and thousands of dollars. If you just would have listened to me when I first took the truck into the shop up in Pennsylvania <clears throat> more than a month ago, if you just would have listened to what I was saying, Peterbilt would have saved thousands upon thousands of dollars because I very specifically explained that the headlight only goes off when I hit a bump which to me is a very substantial, significant piece of information. It's telling you that something that has to do with movement is causing power to be cut to the headlight, the low beam headlight, right? 
like when I took when I dropped this truck off up there and I always say Pocahontas I can't remember it's like Pocahalla or somewhere up there and in Pennsylvania I took it to that dealership I kept saying over and over again when I you know they have you describe the problem I kept saying over and over again every time I hit a bump or it happens only when I hit a bump the low beam fault throws in the truck and the headlight goes out the right passenger side low beam headlight goes out changing the bulb doesn't work looking at fuses doing all that stuff doesn't do anything okay very specific on this but spent minutes explaining how this works so at that <coughs> scenario we're down for a week they change out the headlight assembly over a thousand dollars in parts and labor then we come to Springfield. I explain the exact same thing. I'm even sending text messages to the manager. I'm messaging road assist. Guys, it happens when I hit a bump. The hood bounces a little bit. I hit a bump. The headlight goes out. The fault throws. Okay, then they then thousands of dollars they spend on uh, replacing the chassis control module. Didn't fix the problem. This time, we actually, as you saw in my last video, I think it was my last video, uh, or the one before that, um, where we rolled into Peterbilt and Springfield with the fault on, with the headlight off, which was the first time we were able to do that because they can never replicate it. And they found in, in, around the hood area where a wire was, as you guys said, many of you, a wire was rubbing and causing it to short out. So, um, you know, which was such an easy, stupid, simple fix <clears throat> that they visually were able to find um, in the wiring harness down there in front of the grill where the head, you know, there's like, there's two headlights and then the wiring harness comes together and then goes back towards, you know, the middle of the truck. <sighs> thousands and thousands of dollars. And now there's going to be lots of back pay on um, breakdown pay because we are able to prove that it happened and they actually found the problem. So I just, it just, I don't get it when, you know, I think sometimes there's probably going to be drivers that just come in and bitch about stuff. So I get it, but sometimes there's going to be a situation like me where I walk in and I give you very specific information about what's causing the problem, which to me should indicate something very specific. And then you just ignore that and you start throwing things at it, just trying to get, you know, see if they fix things. Well, then you put me back out on the road then I have the problem again that I'm broke down and then I have to come back in the shop, take more of your time and money because it's a warranty issue. So it just cost everybody money just because you didn't listen. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> you guys that were saying it was probably just a wire rubbing on something or a grounding issue, you were correct. It was a wire that was bouncing a little bit loose, rubbing against the, the, the back of the grill down at the bottom of the hood. And that was causing, when I hit a bump, that wire moved and it just, because we didn't have this problem the first month that we had the truck. It was about a month into it. And that's because it took a month for that wire moving around there, rubbing against the metal to start working down the, the thin layer around that wire. So, ah, <laughs> it's fun times, you guys. So anyway, I have the truck back, um, drove it. I don't know, probably like 45 minutes around Springfield. I could not get it to replicate. So I do believe that it actually is fixed now. Um, and I did take some pretty good bumps intentionally just to try and get it to throw. It didn't throw. So I think we're good now, guys. Um, I think it might finally actually be fixed, which is pretty amazing. So it is Friday. Like I said, we've had a great week of rest. Um, we did not go in the hole again. This is amazing. This is the second time that we've been home for a week and never went negative. I got, I actually got a thousand, almost a thousand bucks last night um, <clears throat> on the 2,100 miles that we ran before we were able, before we took the truck in last Sunday. And because we're going to leave out tomorrow on a load tomorrow night, which will be Saturday. We'll get a load or two in by the next payroll cutoff on Wednesday. So once again, we're likely not going to have to dip into savings or anything like that. We're, we're going to be able to cruise along and get paychecks for this entire time home. So we're really thrilled with the outcome. <clears throat> um, so, and even if we did go in the hole, you know, being that next week, they're going to have to get that back pay on the 
breakdown pay, we'd be okay. But one thing I wanted to say to you guys is a lot of times when I talk about dollars um, and how easy it is for us to climb out of the hole, I want to make sure that it has the caveat that we are a team truck where all the the profit of the truck comes to us both on the truck. That makes a huge difference. And I need to start providing more context on that moving forward when I talk about it. Because some of you are saying, well, yeah, it's easy for you guys. That's true. I'll give you that. That is true. And I need to make that clear. <clears throat> it's not always as easy. And I don't want to imply that it's as easy for a solo driver or a team truck with two, two different drivers, you know, where you have to pay the other driver. Um, and that doesn't come into your own household income it can be really tough to get out of the hole. So I don't want to imply that you can just take this kind of time off all the time. The reason it's easy for us is because we're a team truck that all the income stays with both of us. So it's not hard for us to dig out of a hole if we get into one at all. I mean, we're out like within a week, you know, it's we don't get into holes that take us weeks and weeks and weeks to get out of. The only time you guys saw the video where we had to call it quits on that run like a month ago, or so was because we kept having that mechanical issue and it was just frustrating us, you know, when you go in a shop and, you, and then you, you're down for a week and then you get back out and then the headlights giving you problems, you're having this, you know, you just keep getting down and down and down. It wasn't because we were financially losing, we were actually on an, a really amazing load that time. It was just that we just felt it was beating us up, you know, and had us, step back and take a break but I'll say if you're a couple out there considering driving or if you're a driver going through training right now <clears throat> and your husband or wife or significant other is interested in coming in and team driving with you guys it is so lucrative to do it that way because one of you can be the lease driver one of you can be the company driver using uh, providing benefits to both drivers and all the income, all the profit stays on the truck. <sighs> if you, There are couples that run really hard. We don't run that hard, but there are couples that run really hard. And I'm telling you guys, like they're between the two of them. You know, you, we could make, honestly, we could make over 200 grand a year easily between the two of us if we ran really, really hard. We just don't run that hard. We don't want to. <clears throat> we don't need to. Um, and we still make really good money, but, uh, you know, you just, you can take more time off. You just don't get into the hole. And so it's just, you know, here it is a second time we're home for a week and got paid on the pay period before we got home or right when we got home and the pay period that we leave on, we still got a check, which is pretty freaking amazing. So I'm really happy about that. So Again, one of the reasons I love Prime, everybody, you know, out there on the internet, all these forums always bitch and moan about Prime and our expensive truck payments, but the revenue's there, guys. The revenue's there. The truck payment is not an issue, as I said before. So, love doing it. I've loved having this week off. Sorry, I went dark the last two days, but I just, like I said, I took a social media sabbatical and now I'm back at it. So, we're planning on getting on the road probably late tomorrow night, which would be Saturday night provided there's a load going out um, <clears throat> and then we'll be back at it so the truck is fixed had a great meet up with a subscriber which once again John I very much appreciate the hoodie that is freaking epic very awesome very cool uh, hour or two there got to spend with you good luck in your career and let me know of course anytime if you have any questions or comments or concerns outside of that guys be back with you tomorrow with an update be safe, make good decisions, always drive to thrive. Talk to you soon.